Okay. And have a little, we're gonna have a little chat. We're gonna have a chat about cops. And cops supporting other cops that are doing wrong things. Because evidently you guys have not had a mom around for a while, so. Um, I'm gonna give you a lecture. And let me explain why I'm gonna give you this lecture. My dad explained to me very early on that there were two different kinds of people in the world. There were friends who would turn you in in a heartbeat when you did something wrong, who would make sure that you got reprimanded when, you got, when something went wrong, when you did something wrong, to make sure that you didn't spiral out of control and become a horrible person. And then there were those people who made you think that they were friends. And those people would try and keep you out of trouble as far as like not getting in trouble once you did something wrong. They would um, act as if they were um, being such good friends, um, offering you drugs, alcohol, um, all kinds of crap. And let me tell you that in my experience, I never had a friend that actually cared enough about me to make sure that number one, I was never tempted to do something wrong. I never had a friend that was 100% um, behind my back and keeping me from doing wrong things. So I policed myself. But if you stand or you decide to quit your job, because somebody on your force was doing something wrong and they got fired. Please leave. I don't want you as my police officers. I don't want you to protect me because you're not protecting me. You're part of the problem. So please leave. I can guarantee you that I can find 57 people from the black community who have been victims of people like you who could do a better job. I can. You're replaceable. You're absolutely replaceable. We all are. Now, let me tell you, I know that taking people in night after night Week after week, month after month, a lot of people that are coming right back out on the streets as soon as you haul them in and you go and pick them up for the same exact crime. I know how frustrating that is. I do. I know that after a while, it turns you blue. And I apologize for that. I apologize that you have to have a job where it sucks out your soul. But let me tell you, from somebody who has had to turn herself in, let me tell you from somebody who recognizes in herself that she is a problem, where I've had to t haul my butt in and say, I need help. If you don't have the skills to step outside yourself and recognize that you no longer can do the job correctly and that you need to request to step out or go on to administrative, you know, work, work behind a desk or something for a while. If you can't recognize that in yourself, you have no business being a police officer in the first place. Because let me tell you, all of you will go through it. Every single one of you, every nurse that works on a cancer ward, that deals with dying patients every single day, people that are in pain every single day, we call it burnout. But what it is, is it sucks your soul out of your body. Why do you think that people re revere you so, so much when you get that job? because they know it's gonna suck your soul out. It's going to turn you into stone. Your heart will become like stone after a while. Why do you think we have churches? 
Why do you think we have that? Because Jesus called us to do an impossible task. Impossible. It's impossible. You cannot help everybody. You cannot fix everything. You cannot do what he asks us to do unless you go and get recharged. Unless you go and have your heart softened again and again and again. You can't do the job he asked you to do unless you have a way of softening your heart every single week. Every week. I know your job sucked out your soul and I don't blame you. I pity you, but I don't blame you. I blame the society that we're in. I blame the circumstances that we're in. Just like I don't blame a black child whose parents are working their asses off or their mom is working, excuse my language, their mom is a single parent working day in, day out to support them and is no longer home and the neighborhood has become the, day, the babysitter. The teenagers, the ones who need the, 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 the supervision the most have become the, the, the babysitters for the five and six year olds. It's not right. It's not right that a man leaves a woman and makes her become both caretaker and provider. They're two humongous full-time jobs and you can't do them both, not well. It's not the society's problem to raise these kids, but they can't be raised alone. Yes, it's a broken system and you are in a precarious job. But for you guys who are sitting there protecting people that have a blowout on the job, that is a sign and symptom of their soul being gone. They are in need of a recharge. And if they can't recognize that they need the recharge and go get that, whatever help is necessary, whatever help comes to you, then you are not helping them by supporting them. You are not helping them by not turning them in. You are not helping them. You are not their friend. You are not their friend if you don't turn them in. You are not their friend if you don't make them get help, if you don't make them get off the squad, if they can't find help. You're not their friend. Don't pretend to be. Do not sit there and act like you are standing up with them because you 57 people who quit because that person got fired, you're not their friend. You're pretending to be their friend. You would have been their friend if you had walked up to him and said, you know what? I think you need a timeout. I think you need to go home. That's what a friend does. That's what a friend does. A friend doesn't let a person get to the point where they can sit on a person's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds quietly with his hand in his pocket, with people watching him murder somebody. Those are not friends. Those are not friends. They may be people in trouble just like him, but they're not friends. So do not come and tell me that you're sticking up for your brothers in blue because you know what you just did? You offered them a death sentence. And worse than a death sentence, you offered them a life in prison. You're not their friend. Friends don't do that. Friends turn in the people because they know that when you get slapped on the wrist, the first time you do something and you stop doing it, you're golden, man. You learned a lesson, you only did it one time, and it, you got out of it quick. The person that says, you know what, let's do this. Let's have some alcohol. Okay, let's, let's, have, let's have some marijuana. Okay, let's go do some drugs. That ain't your friend. That's not your friend. They don't, want the, they don't want what's best for you. They don't. They don't want what's best for you. You may think they do, but they don't. So, you guys want to support these people that are doing wrong? You want to support people that are breaking the law behind a badge? Please quit today. Turn in your badges and quit today. You want to support them? Then you, if you are at that point, 
then you need to quit because you've been burned out. You have no soul left. It's time to get out. I'm not going to stop you. We're not going to stop you as a society. We have plenty of people that we can get, we can put in those positions. Absolutely. If you are burned out to the part that you are angry, angry enough to haul off and hit somebody that's elderly, haul off and tase college students that are sitting in their cars, in a line of cars that can't actually move, it's time to get out. And I know you're angry and you're too angry to do your job. You're too angry. So get out, please. I'm begging you, get out.